Hi, Bob Leffler here. Welcome back to the Fearless Agent Success Series. And we're here to make you a fearless agent. So fearless agents keep track of stuff differently, stats, that kind of stuff, than regular agents. So here's what I want you to not keep track of, okay? Uh, you've heard me talk about how fearless agents should always schedule five listing appointments a week. Let me tell you about, there are some people that I coach that are constantly keeping track of the number of dials that they do on the phone. There are some people that keep track of the number of no's they get. There are some people that keep track of the number of contacts they make. Do you know what all those people have in common? They don't, they don't schedule five listing appointments a week. And the people who do always schedule five listing appointments a week, they never know the number of dials they made, the number of contacts, they don't know any of that because it doesn't matter. You don't get off the phone until you've scheduled five. That's the secret, okay. So we talked a little bit about goal setting. If your goal is to schedule five, the way you do it is you commit to the process, not the goal. The goal is five. The goal is 40 listings a year. The goal is $350,000 net taxable income. The goal is 700,000 gross, maybe. But that's not what you commit to. You commit to the process, and the process is you don't get off the phone until you've scheduled five. So if you're gonna keep track of stuff the way fearless agents do, keep track of the number of hours it takes you to schedule five. I want you to know that number because then you're gonna know the no dollars per hour that you earned at the end of the year, okay? So that's a good thing to know. So one thing we provide you with is a little form, nothing fancy. You can make this on your, on your own. But the date of today, if I scheduled a listing appointment, so keep track of the date that today is, the number of listing appointments that you schedule, have a column for that. The number of listing appointments that you go on, listing appointments attended. Uh, the number of listing, uh, listings that you take. And the number of sales that you make, that would be a buyer placed under contract, not yet closed. Uh, the number of listings of yours that go under contract, not yet closed. And then the number of closings and then uh, the, the, you know, the, uh, the property address and the client's name and the list price and the uh, listing sold price and uh, your listing sold price and the closing price. So if you keep track of those over on a weekly basis and you have all that stuff for a year, uh, that is very helpful. So one, at the very minimum, what I want you to know so if I was going to take your temperature, so to speak, on a coaching call, uh, sometimes people will be saying, I'm having a problem with this guy. And I say, you know, before we talk about that guy, uh, how many listing appointments do you schedule per week? And let's say they say two. I go, okay. Well, let me just ask you this. If you scheduled five listing appointments a week, would we be talking about this guy? And the answer is no, because we wouldn't care about this guy. See, when you schedule five listing appointments every week, you have this attitude that I got 50 more look just like you. So if you give me any kind of baloney, we can cut this real short and I'll replace you with some other guy. So that's kind of my attitude. I don't, if you're having a problem with this guy, then get 50 other guys and you won't worry about that guy. So that is a part of the mindset of goal setting and keeping track of the right thing. So at a very minimum, the very minimum, I want you to keep track of this. The number of hours that you do prospecting. Keep track of the number of listing appointments that you schedule. I know you're gonna know the number that you go on because they're gonna be in your calendar and the number of listings that you get, okay? if you're an agent who, like many of my fearless agents, they say, I don't want to do that listing thing. I like buyers, you know, for whatever reason. Most people that I coach, they like listings. But if you like buyers, then keep track of the number of buyer appointments that you set. Maybe you're in an open house doing that. Maybe you're uh, 
you have uh, some other way of generating buyer leads, but I would recommend open houses primarily. So in office buyer appointments where they're pre-approved through your lender, you could keep track of that and then the number of houses that you sell and that, that's, so at the bare, bare minimum, that's what I want you to keep track of. Oh, by the way, I was at a Floyd Wickman, my very first Floyd Wickman uh, Sweat Hogs seminar. And they talked about goal setting, which we have talked about. And they said, make a goal poster, like a vision board, okay? And I go, okay, I'm gonna do that. Now, uh, I'm not the type of coach that gets really into that kind of stuff, but I think there's some value in that. So I went into magazines and cut out all the things I wanted to buy. So I, I wanted to buy a certain kind of car. So I cut out a picture of that car and stuck it on the, on the little poster. And then I had, oh, I wanted a, uh, this is before iPhones and stuff. It was like a Palm Pilot or something like that. So I wanted that. And then there was other things. I, oh, I wanted to buy a house and I wanted to, to uh, oh, I wanted to take guitar lessons. Horrible idea. Not all these goals are good ideas. <laughs> okay, so that was a bad one, <laughs> but I did do it. So I put all these, all these goals on the board. And uh, then, you know, the, the program was over. It was a 12-week program. And I take the, the vision board and it had been hanging and then it got tattered and I put it away. And years later, I pull that vision board out and I look at it and there's that car, that color parked in my driveway. And I actually did buy that little, you know, uh, organizer thing. Uh, that was three of them ago, and and I did take guitar lessons. Horrible idea, remember, that one didn't work out. Uh, you know, I bought that house. I got all those things. Literally every one of those things came true. Oh, there was a vacation and playing more golf and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, there is something about that. What you focus on is going to happen, whether it's negative or whether it's positive. Now, you meet people who are constantly very negative and they're focused on negative things. I notice that people who feel like they get ripped off all the time, they say, I got, you know, treated unfairly at this and I got ripped off and all that. Well, what do all those people have in common? Oh, they're super cheap, aren't they? Yeah, they're not the kind of people who pay 7%. <laughs> they don't get the best doctor. They don't get the best realtor. They don't get the best. They get some substandard thing because they're always looking for a good deal and you'll end up getting what you ask for. You can always tell what people want because they already have it. You can always tell what people want to do because they're already doing it. So if you put on your vision board or your goal poster what you want, and it is realistic, you know, don't put the, don't put the uh, Bentley Azure on there. Put a car that's gettable in the next year for you. Get that house that's gettable in the next year or two for you. Get the thing that would be affordable if you were a very successful fearless agent and you'll get that stuff probably. So keep your, keep your attitude right, be positive, focus on, on what's important to you. And uh, again, schedule five, two will cancel, go on three, you'll get one, and you will hit your goals, and you will be a fearless agent. I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks.